Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to look at the circular flow of income. The circular flow of income is a diagrammatic representation of the economy, the main players, the terminology, and some of the approaches that might be adopted by governments in an attempt to manage the economy. Whilst this is not intended to be a detailed economics lecture, it will provide an overview of the economic environment within which companies operate and highlight how actions taken by governments can affect the operations of companies. Specifically, this presentation will cover the economy in its simplest form, monetary policy, fiscal policy, balance of payments and other policies. Let's look at each of these in turn. The economy in its simplest form. In its simplest form, the economy has two players, firms who manufacture goods and households who supply the factors of production, such as labour and capital. To show this diagrammatically, households supply labour to firms which in turn allows firms to manufacture goods which they supply to households. As goods and services flow in one direction, the associated money flows in the opposite direction. As such, households receive wages in return for supplying their labour and this means they can pay for the goods provided by firms. This is referred to as consumption. For this presentation, we are only interested in the flows of money. We now have a continuous circle of money flowing around the economy and this represents the size of the economy. Governments will want to grow the economy, i.e. the volume of money flowing around the circle, and increase employment. However, they will wish to avoid creating inflation, which arises when households are demanding goods at a quicker rate than firms can supply them. Governments can attempt to address inflation using either monetary or fiscal policies, and we will now look at each of these in turn. Monetary policy. As discussed above, in simple terms, inflation is caused when demand outstrips supply and consumers end up competing for limited supplies, which pushes prices up. In response to this, governments will want to stop consumers spending and one approach is to encourage them to save instead, which they can do by increasing interest rates. To reflect this aspect of our diagram, we need to introduce a new player to the economy, banks. Banks and other similar institutions take deposits from savers and use these to provide borrowings to lenders, both households and firms. Governments, through central banks, may choose to take some of the money saved out of circulation, thereby reducing the money supply, the amount of physical money in circulation. This combination of using interest rates and the money supply to control inflation is referred to as monetary policy. High interest rates can impact on companies in a number of ways. Sales may fall as consumers save instead. This is likely to affect companies providing luxury items more than those providing necessities. The cost of borrowing for consumers will increase which may reduce disposable incomes. For example, the cost of existing loans may take up a bigger proportion of their income as interest rates rise. And this will make it harder for consumers to afford large items for which loans may be required. The company's own borrowing will be more expensive, which may make the investment in infrastructure more expensive. Fiscal policy. 
an alternative approach that governments may adopt in an attempt to reduce consumer spending is to increase taxes, such that households have less disposable income. The money generated by the government can then be used to redistribute wealth by providing benefits to households or stimulate sectors of the economy through government spending. For example, if the government decides to build a hospital, not only is this a worthwhile project in its own right, but will also create jobs in the construction industry. There are, of course, other things that governments can spend money on. However, these are the key choices in this context. From the perspective of firms, their sales and profits are likely to suffer as disposable incomes fall. And this will hit hardest at firms who provide luxury products. Balance of payments. Balance of payments refers to the relative size of imports and exports. Given that we are focusing on movements of cash as opposed to goods and services, exports are an inflow to the circle whilst imports are an outflow as money is paid to overseas firms in return for goods purchased. As such, it is extremely difficult for a country to continue long term in a situation where imports exceed exports and this situation is referred to as a balance of payments deficit. Faced with this situation governments may try to make our exports more attractive to foreign customers and imports from foreign suppliers less so by manipulating exchange rates. Clearly this will be helpful to companies trying to export their goods, however can equally increase the costs of firms who import raw materials. Governments could also try to artificially increase the cost of foreign imports by charging import duties or levies. However, their ability to do so may be challenged, for example by the World Trade Organization, and this aspect is not considered further here. Finally, governments could attempt to reduce consumer demand overall. However, given the previous paragraph, this may affect domestic firms as much as foreign ones. Other policies. Finally, there are other government policies that could potentially impact on the decisions and actions of firms. These include competition policies that may veto acquisition or mergers on the ground that they would afford the firm too much power and be bad for consumers. Environmental policies may force companies to change processes or to build in safety checks to existing processes. Either could increase the operating costs. Conversely, governments may offer consumers grants, for example for loft insulation. These may create an opportunity for firms able to offer such services. Finally, health and safety policies and employment legislation may also require process changes and increase costs. However, could also provide a competitive advantage for firms who already have high standards in these areas. Thank you.